Welcome back to the Motor Show here on Talk Radio. Now, I want you at home, or if you're listening in the car or wherever, just to, just to imagine this, okay? When I tell you about an air race, okay, we, we think about planes, basically, they set some time, they race through the sky, and then they stop. Then another plane tries to beat that time, and so on and so forth, okay? Now I want you to imagine eight planes all at the same time racing each other, okay? It sounds utterly crazy. It sounds terrifying. It sounds very dangerous. It also sounds brilliant. And I'd like to learn more about it. I hope you will continue to lend us your ears because Mr. Jeff Zoltman is here. Jeff, you're going to tell us all about you're the organizer of Air Race. Absolutely. That's right. It's the Air Race One World Cup, uh, which is the top title in the world for the sport of Formula One air racing. So it's a sport that's been around for actually over 70 years. Really? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's uh, been known as Formula One for a long, long time. It's a super exciting sport, as as you explained. It's eight airplanes racing directly against each other at the same time. So these planes actually take off from the runway, lining up in a grid pattern. Green flag waves, they're off. They're racing from the start. They take off. And they shoot around a course, eight laps around a very tight circuit, just 10 meters above the ground, 450 kilometers per hour, 250, 270 miles an hour, fastest motorsport in the world, and first one across the line wins. Oh, I love the sound of this. <laughs> I mean, how does it work? Can they can they fly above each other? Can they go underneath? Are they are they kind of pulling stunts and things? Is it mostly side to side? It's not stunts. It's actually all about speed. So right. this is a pure motorsport, absolutely pure motorsport. It's just pure racing, and they're trying to be the fastest, best race line, first one across the line. Simple as that. But they're all together. So, of course, they all have different tactics, different maneuvers, and, and they're all going to be trying to get, you know, fight for the best race line and not allow anyone else to pass them. Um, but they're all they're all in it together. Uh, they're not allowed to pass above or below. They have to pass on the side. Okay. Um, so that gets really tricky around turns because if you can visualize an airplane going around a turn, yeah. it's going to bank and effectively its uh, field of view it kind of puts it perpendicular to the ground. So then a plane who's trying to pass it is going to have to climb. So it gets very complicated and very very interesting, but never stops being exciting. This is nuts. Yeah. I absolutely love the sound of this. It also sounds incredibly dangerous. Well, it could be if we didn't uh, make sure that we have the best pilots, the best training. They're screened. Uh, of course, they have a lot of experience, um, usually in a lot of different areas of flying and different different uh, walks of aviation. Um, so these guys are absolutely the best pilots in the world. And, of course, there's a lot of rules. I mentioned the sport has been around for over 70 years, so we've de been developing it with the sports federations, the governing bodies, for a long, long time and reviewing safety procedures and everything else. So it can be dangerous, just like all motorsport. And in aviation, there's a zero margin of error. You can't bump yeah. like in car racing. I was going to say, if you hit someone's wing, then... That's it, isn't it, for both of you? It it, it very well could be. And Does that we, happen? We very much try not to do that. Right. Yeah. Well, of course. <laughs> yeah. No. It's, it's it's something we take very seriously. Of course, the you know eighty percent of what we do is really all about safety, and the rest is sport. Uh, so a lot of great details paid towards that, but um, but there's always a risk, and 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 it can be very very tragic. So uh, it doesn't happen very often, and we want to make sure that it happens almost never. Um, but yeah. yeah, it's it's dangerous, but. That, you know, these guys know the risk, and it's a calculated risk, and, and they're uh, the best in the world. So how does it work with, because it sounds to me like this is primarily going to be based on the pilot's skill. Because, for example, in Formula One, don't get me wrong, I am not not for a second suggesting that Lewis Hamilton isn't an unbelievably talented world-class driver. Of course he is. But he's also backed by the best car, more often than not. Do you see what I mean? Uh, you know, the, the guys that compete against him, they're very, they're, but the trouble is, in, in F1, in many other racing series with with wheels you know the dividing factor is usually the equipment do you see what i mean there are so many world-class drivers racers that they often they're all that good it's just about who can get in the best machinery is it the same with these planes not 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 exactly the plane had obviously it's 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 your mount it's it, it plays a, a huge element in the race um, and some planes are faster than others, indeed. But what's very fascinating about this sport is that the pilots build these airplanes. So, oh. <laughs> so they build them, oftentimes with a couple of engineering friends, and they get together, and they actually design and build these planes to the specification of the formula, and they race them. So 
all planes have on one hand an even playing field because they have a long list of criteria, you know, pages and pages and pages of technical specifications they have to meet. But at the same time, they can connect those dots however they see fit. And there's different concepts about it. And they, a lot of them, of course, use modern technologies and different materials and aerodynamic theories and everything else. So it, it can very much be about the plane, but you're not going to win a race without a darn good pilot. So you yeah. still got to be the best. You still got to be trained. You still got to be experienced and to know your opponents. Uh, who are on the field with you because of course you know you're out there with seven other airplanes trying to pass you at speed so it's it, i mean you know it's thrilling it takes everything it takes a pilot and a plane and what's kind of fun about the planes is these they become very personal of course personifications of the pilot yeah and they can be traded they, they can you know be bought or sold as well um and they have a name and um you know with every every plane has has a history and has you know a, kind of a persona and and, and people sometimes follow the plane. So there is an element of that. Um, Are they branded? I mean, have they got kind of sponsorship on or crazy pictures or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, of course, the teams get sponsors. Uh, it's, yeah. you know, I mean, our sport is just like any other sport, just like all motorsports. You know, it's a great platform for marketing and the pilots are, are great ambassadors for brands. And so, so they do that, absolutely. And, uh, you know, the planes, uh, I mean, they're all really fun, painted, really cool colors and designs and what some of them really what cool. sort of planes are we pick, picture it for me paint I mean, okay for some reason i've got a biplane in my head and it's blatantly <laughs> not going to be that no 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 well because i mentioned it's a very old sport uh, but actually um it's uh, it modernizes every year you know along with technology and adv other advancements uh so uh yeah no it's um i mean the planes are they're single seat of course uh yeah. piston driven so that means a propeller uh, 100 horsepower engine they can actually do things to it to get about 170 horsepower out of it but with that 100 horsepower engine, they're going to get 250, 270 miles an hour. So, uh, you know, it, it's just really, I mean, these planes are super sleek. There's no drag. So aerodynamics is everything. Uh, they have to have, for instance, uh, one of the specifications of the formula is they have to have 66 square foot of wing area. So, huh. but that could be different shapes and lengths and widths and everything else. So, you know, there's all kinds of different, you know, factors that go into it. But so they can all look very different. But they're all, you know, they have a look and they, they look like a race plane, just like how you could imagine something really? really sleek that cuts through the air. So like with all world championships, one of the things you've got, which I love about it, is you race all over the world. Now, if this were cars, I'd be able to say to you, well, do certain cars suit certain tracks you know we we all know that certain cars might not perform as well in the wet or they're not as fast on the straight or whatever is that the same with the planes if because it sounds crazy because obviously the tracks are in the sky but w when you talk about with the corners and with the altitude potentially and i, and I suppose things like weather and, and and this kind of thing you know for example your next race is in thailand right so That's can right. you already can you already think to yourself oh well plane number three will will, will be the hot favorite because of I don't know how it performs. Yeah, actually, it's the heat, really, in Thailand. So yeah. the heat is absolutely demanding on these planes. And the pilots, they've got to sit in the cockpit, even if it's just for 10, 15 minutes for a race. Um, the heat is just absolutely unrelenting. And on the engines, I mean, now these planes, they, they do eight laps. And a typical race is about eight minutes long. I and mean, we do multiple races in a day for different heat races. But the planes are yeah, pretty much geared up to run nine laps. You know, they just want to finish that race first and get back. So, you know, it, it, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, it's it, all the different environmental factors absolutely come into it. You know, they've got to make sure that rent engine can actually last nine laps and get them across the finish line. Yeah. So there's a lot of demands, of course, wind and rain, uh, you know, we don't do well in rain, you know, but luckily we fly very low to the ground, 30 feet above the ground. So we don't have to worry about cloud bases or anything like that. Do you race yourself, Jeff? No, sadly, I don't. I'm too busy organizing the events. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I, I, I do fly, but and that's kind of how I got into the sport. But to be honest, uh, you know, these guys are, are, are leagues above me. Well, look, let's talk to one of them. We've, we've got one on the line. Eves Clark, I believe, is joining us. Eve, can you hear us? Hello? Hello, can you oh, hear me? There he is. Brilliant. How are you doing? Very good. How are you guys? Welcome to the show. I'm presuming you already know Jeff. It would be bizarre if you didn't. Hey. Hi, Jeff. Yes, I do. Jeff's just been telling us about this incredible sport. What's it like to race in? Well, um, as you may or may not know, it's my rookie year, so I haven't actually raced one um, just yet, but I have been flying the little airplanes for many years. Um, the sport itself is incredibly exhilarating to watch, and, um, you know, doing 250 miles an hour, 30 feet off the ground, it's uh, pretty intense. I mean, it sounds brilliant. How, so, you, obviously, the, the next race, so your first race, will, will be in Thailand. How are you feeling about it? Are you, are you terrified? Are you excited? 
Um, a bit of both, really. No, I'm very <laughs> excited to be doing it. Um, it's been a long time coming. I've spent the last four months preparing. Uh, I was hoping to race out in, um, in no, Nevada la, uh, earlier this month, but uh, it didn't work out. But yes, I'm very much looking forward to it. It's been a sort of lifelong dream, really, for me. I mean, if this this is a brand new sport for me. I'm literally learning about it as we speak right now. So, uh, you know, apologies if this sounds like a naive question, but are you? Do you have a job as well, or is this a full time uh, proposition for you? Is this how you make your money? What's the? How does it work? Not yet. So well, that's the idea, I suppose. We're trying to grow the sport, but most of us are either commercial pilots or ex Air Force pilots. Um, I'm currently working for a small international airline out of uh, London um, but yeah, that enables me to take the time uh, to prepare and obviously I've been flying my whole career so it's not a not a bad preparation yeah absolutely although I can imagine your uh, your passengers on your commercial line if they're if they're figuring out when you you come in for a cool they, landing they know. you're just practicing you know they might be like whoa <laughs> hang on what's what's this going yeah. about the two uh, types of flying are very different. However, my professional career enables me to have a very sort of special um, safety approach to this because it is, you know, mildly hazardous. You didn't recently fly to... Uh, this is a very random chat, actually. <laughs> you didn't recently fly to Ibiza, did you? Because I had a do-over. Literally just as we were about to land, the wow, wheels he overshot. And we, we had to zoom straight back up. And, you know, now I know this. I'm thinking, hang on, maybe this guy was just kind of going... Sounds like you. I need a little bit of practice at the, the 10 metres above thing. <laughs> you know, that, it's kind of putting the pieces together here. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't go to Ibiza, so ah. I'd like to, but no, that wasn't me. You probably experienced a go-round, which is professional pilots are ready for a go-round at any time. Some of the situations that you get in terms of weather, or maybe there was somebody on the runway, you just go around, chuck it away, and have another go. This guy just overshot it. It was as simple as that. Yeah. That's that's what yeah. they told us in the plane. Was, Sorry, I just overshot that. Have, an, yeah. have another go. Fair enough. Fair it's a very random thing to say. Um, anyway, right. So, Eve, you're you know you're going to be in it to win it, of course. How competitive can you be as a, as a rookie? Um, we're all trying to win. That's why we do it. As a rookie, though, I think I'm going to take it easy for the first few races to find my feet. The most important thing is. Testing the airplane, making sure it's reliable. As mm. Jeff said, you know we're we're crashing these engines for 10, 15 minutes at the absolute maximum they can take. So for me, it's going to be a uh, a trial, really. Eve, how aware are you of of the dangers that that will come with the racing? Because of course, you know you've mentioned you have a career. You you know you I mean that, not that that would make it any less dangerous, but you know you. You have obligations that you have to get back to probably as soon as the race is finished. You've got to get back to the day job, as it were. You know, you, you can't risk anything going wrong, can you, really? I mean, you know. Uh, well, it's a good question, and um, one I often ask myself. However, we are trained, and the safety aspect of the training is so strong. You know, you, you race around at 30 feet at 250 miles an hour. It sounds ridiculous. However, you've got an enormous amount of energy. So if the engine were to quit on you, for example, you have a plan in the back of your head all the time about what you're going to do. So you would transfer that 250 miles an hour into height and then glide down to one of the runways below you. And this is something you think about all the time. So... The, the, the other risk is hitting other aircraft. Yeah. And of course, these strict rules of racing are that we're only going to pass on the right. Um, we never cut inside somebody and keep the airplanes in sight all the time. So, you know, we're all mates. We're not trying to kill each other. It's, it's the exact opposite, in fact. It's, it's, you know, it's well rehearsed, um, exactly how the race takes place. Yeah. And we kind of, Sorry, we kind of know where everyone's going to be after a few laps. I, I can add that, uh, um, I mean, of course, mid-air collisions are, are, are very rare, or, yeah. or of course the sport wouldn't wouldn't continue, but um, it, it is, I, I don't want to say common, but it's very, let's say, uh, practiced, as you've said, or very normal for 
something like an engine failure to happen or some right. other, you know, some other issue overheating or some other indication the pilot can have. And they condition themselves and train themselves as, as to what to do in that situation all the time. So it really just comes down to reaction. So it's conditioning. And, and as you said, they pull up and inside the circuit and there's a procedure for it and they just land, uh, you know, next, next land, possible landing. It sounds absolutely brilliant. I, I have to say, I knew nothing about this beforehand, but I've, I'm so excited to be learning about it now. I want to get, I want to get involved in this. I want to go and see this. Careful what you ask for. <laughs> well, I don't mean I want to fly it, <laughs> but I mean, you know, I'd love to come to a race. It sounds absolutely exhilarating. Eva, you prepared for because, of course, you, you know, you commercial pilot, you've done all sorts of flights. You, you'll be, you know, in, in any job, you'll step into that with a relaxed vibe. But with this racing, are you prepared with the adrenaline surge that you're going to have? Well, that's what I'm doing. You know, I've been an adrenaline junkie my whole life. I used to fly paragliders and then I've driven cars around race tracks and then I'm, I can't wait actually. I'm really looking forward to it. And flying little airplanes, aerobatic airplanes gives you a bit of a rush, but I don't think it's going to be quite as much of a rush as this racing. No, it sounds amazing. Listen, you'll have to come back and tell us how you got on. Is that okay? I, I will. I'll be delighted to, yeah. Great. Eve, good luck. Thank you for talking to us. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Brilliant. What a lovely man. Jeff, wow. How can I see it? How can I learn more about this? Well, uh, we're going to be on TV in over 100 countries, uh, you know, the, kind of the, the usual sort of cable channels around the world. We're going to be streaming it live. Um, and uh, you're going to see a lot more of us. We're going to do a lot more events. We're, we're growing the sport. Uh, as I mentioned, it's the first international title for the series, uh, for the sport, rather. So our series is expanding around the world. Um, you're going to be a lot more events and a lot more races, and you're absolutely welcome to come out. I'd and, love to. And participate. Check it out. Oh, brilliant. So, right. So Thailand, when? When is what? We 17 to 19 November. So it's just a little over a month away. That's we're going to be in Thailand. It's supported by the Thai government, so they've been extremely gracious hugely helpful in promoting it and you know developing the event for us and really i mean it's been fantastic in fact the prime minister of thailand is going to be there and Amazing. you know minister of tourism and everybody they're really supportive and we have you know a partner we have chang beer over there that oh, uh, you know great brand to, to help out so there's a lot of good people and you know it's just gonna be fantastic which part of thailand is it it's just about an hour and maybe a bit uh southeast of bangkok so okay. Pattaya is the city and it's at, actually the I've thai been to, I've been to navy Pattaya. base oh really yeah. okay yeah yeah all right, good. Well, oh, brilliant! It, it's a, you know, it's a fantastic. I mean, it's a really fun place. It's a real tourist town, and uh, and we're on a naval uh, air base. It used to be a U.S. Air Force base, actually. Uh, it was handed back to the Thai Navy, and uh, they've been again great hosts, and it's going to be a lot of fun. You can get a boat uh, to an amazing island that's about an hour away. That's what actually all the pilots were planning on taking a break after the race and going down. So stay away from that island after a week after <laughs> I was the event. Yeah. Say, yeah, yeah, you've been warned. Okay, so Thailand next month, Thailand in November, and then where else can we see you guys racing? Well, uh, we're going to be unveiling our plans for next year, probably at the end of this year. So okay. we've got, you know, right now we're still sorting through our short list of venues that want to host it next year. Uh, we're, you know, in detailed conversation with cities all over the world and pretty much every continent. So. You know, we're just absolutely delighted with the uptake of the sport, you know, and, and interest surprised. around the world. I am totally, I'm already hooked. I'm <laughs> already, and I have not even seen a picture of the planes. It sounds absolutely gripping, and I'm sure our listeners are going to be like, wow, how can we get some of that? I might have to talk to Talk Sport too and see if they can cover it as well, actually. Uh, brilliant. Um, Jeff, thank you very much for sharing this amazing new sport with us. It's not new, of course, it's been around for seven, seven years, but to us it's new. Um, I want to know more. Simple as that, really. Keep us posted, please. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Fantastic.